Helping San Antonio starts right now. A man is hit by a passing vehicle on Loop 410 on the city's southwest side. We'll have the latest details from police. As the number of cases in the U.S. continues to surge, find out why the CDC says the number of those infected is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. That story coming up. And Justin was just telling us some areas in San Antonio got some rain last night. Will that trend continue later today? He'll let you know in just a bit. Morning. It is Friday. It's June 26th. Let's check in with Justin. I know we are saying, okay, so you got rain. Uh huh. Stone on the Oak north area. side. Yep. I'm on the northeast side. I didn't get any rain. I was so I watered my grass. Yeah, I didn't get a drop either. But if you didn't get rain yesterday, there's a decent chance you'll get some today. I think we're going to see more downpours showing up on radar. It's probably going to be a little bit busier today. And the radar's already starting to show some showers and storms out there. So let's show you what we're looking at right now. Uh, the activity is down towards Corpus. That's where a lot of the, the moisture is at the moment. But this is all going to spread north today. And you'll see these downpours pop up. If you're lucky enough to get underneath one of them, it's going to drop some pretty good rain. We could see some minor flooding uh, in spots. But not everybody's going to get rain. It's one of those situations where it'll be hit or miss through the afternoon. 72 Kerrville, 73 right now, Bandera, 75 New Braunfels, 75 in Forestville. We're also starting to see the clouds shift in as well. And forecast looks like this, 40% chance of rain noontime, 84. We'll take it up to a 60% chance of rain by the afternoon. And temperatures should stay in the 80s as long as we do have these downpours around the area. Uh, Southeast Julie went 5 to 15. We also have that dust starting to shift in or it's really here. Uh, we may see some hazy skies today too. We're going to talk about the rest of your forecast in the weekend coming up here in just a bit, but let's get over to Nick this morning. Take a look at the roadways. Any problems out there? No, right now, Justin, things are looking really good out there. Uh, no major accidents to report. A lot of green on the screen. Had a couple of accidents when I came in. They're since cleared up, so good news there for everyone. Let's take a look at the trans guy. 35 in Brooklyn looking good. 35 in Caesar Chavez. Look at that. Smooth selling there. We got 410 in Calabria Road there on the west side. That looks great. And uh, we'll do one more. 35 in Martin. Oh, some a little uh, light traffic up there, but not bad at all. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great start to your morning. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after being hit by a passing vehicle on Loop 410 South. Police say it happened on 410 near Somerset Road. Just before 2 a.m., a driver hit a guardrail and spun out into the median. SAPD says then the driver got out, ran back up the highway and was clipped by another vehicle. That vehicle then spun out. The driver of the first one was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. No word on the condition of the driver of that second vehicle. It's the largest increase in COVID cases we've seen in one day since the start of this pandemic. More than 600 cases added in just the last 24 hours. And now a third of all those COVID patients in the hospital are now in ICU. Here in Bear County, we now have a total of 8,452 COVID-19 cases. No new deaths to report. So the death toll remains at 104 people. While more than 3,000 people have recovered from COVID-19, 5,300 are still fighting the illness. Only 25% of staff beds are available for Bear County. There are now 628 people in the hospital and 202 of them are in the intensive care unit. That's the first time those numbers have topped 200. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has put a reopening on pause here in Texas after two days of record increases in positive cases. He's also put a stop to elective surgeries in the state's most populated counties. Of course, that's Bear, Dallas, Harris and Travis. The number of COVID-19 patients admitted in hospitals has doubled in the last two weeks. Businesses that have opened under the previous phases will be allowed to continue to operate under the protocols from the Texas Department of State Health Services. Governor Abbott said in a statement, I ask all Texans to do their part to slow the spread of COVID-19 by wearing a mask, washing hands regularly, and socially distancing from others. Well, COVID-19 is also affecting hundreds of young adults in Bear County. More than 2,000 people between the ages of 20 and 29 have tested positive as of Wednesday. Tiffany Jew recently graduated from Texas A&M San Antonio, and she has COVID-19. She says she hopes her story helps someone else. I didn't think I would get this at all. I thought I was young, healthy. I work out every day. Your lungs are not going to be the same for a while afterward. If you enjoy, you know, certain kinds of exercise and, and getting out, you know, it's going to it's going to be harder. You're going to be weak for a while. It's this is not just the flu. 
The city says they are trying to reach young people in San Antonio in every way possible. They've launched a Facebook photo frame to promote staying at home, and they've even filmed a PSA with Patty Mills. As cases of coronavirus continue to escalate in more than half the nation, the White House Coronavirus Task Force will hold its first briefing in almost two months today, led by the vice president. The U.S. has nearly two and a half million confirmed cases of coronavirus and nearly 125,000 deaths known so far. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the latest. Faced with surging coronavirus cases, Texas now reversing plans to move forward with the next phase of reopening as the state records a record number of hospitalizations. So my dad's hanging on by a thread. They're in there by themselves with no family. You know, and it's just heartbreaking. His father, one of 18 members of one Texas family infected after attending a surprise birthday party. Arizona, Delaware, and New Mexico also slamming on the brakes, pausing plans to reopen. All this coming. while a debate rages about whether masks are necessary. From California. Are you going to allow the government to tell you you have to wear a mask? No! To Arizona. I can't agree. To Florida. It's our bodies, it's our choice, whether we're gonna wear them, not wear them. You guys are overstepping your boundaries. Doctors reinforcing how vital face coverings are. Yeah, masks are an absolutely critical component to uh, really ending this pandemic. A new model from the University of Washington suggests that some 33,000 lives could be saved by October 1st if nearly everyone wears a mask. And now a stunning revelation from the CDC that for every coronavirus case they have confirmed, 10 people more are likely infected. The CDC estimating 20 million people in the U.S. have been infected with the virus. That's about 6% of the population. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. 437, 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the surging coronavirus numbers and your summer vacation. We'll tell you some extra things you'll have to go through as many destinations post travel restrictions. A late night filing by the U.S. Justice Department asking the Supreme Court to end the Affordable Care Act. More details just ahead. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It's 77 degrees and I don't know if I felt as much humidity outside, but rain may be on the way. Justin will let you know about that in just a bit. The Trump administration once again hoping the Supreme Court will end the Affordable Care Act. The act has enabled millions of Americans to get health insurance coverage. In a late night filing, the Department of Justice asked the court to invalidate the entire law. U.S. Solicitor General argued that the program should be nullified if the law's individual coverage mandate and two key provisions are invalidated. The Supreme Court is considering whether the law's individual mandate was rendered unconstitutional after Congress reduced its penalty. The justices will hear arguments in the case sometime next term. The law remains in effect despite the pending legal challenge. Well, the American jobs crisis is far from over. According to the Department of Labor, another one and a half million Americans filed initial jobless claims last week. That brings a total number of new jobless claims filed since mid-March to more than 47 million. First-time claims for unemployment benefits have fallen in every jobs report for the past 12 weeks. So conditions in the U.S. labor market are undoubtedly, in, undoubtedly improving, but the jobless claims in numbers are still higher than they have ever been since before the pandemic. Well, here's some good news this morning. Stocks will be heading into the weekend on a positive note. Wall Street saw a rally before the session ended yesterday. Bank equities got a boost after financial regulators announced it would uh, make it easier to invest in venture capital funds. Energy stocks also got a shot in the arm for rising oil prices. The Dow gained nearly 300 points. The Nasdaq Composite and the S&P 500 also finished in positive territory. 441, 77 degrees on your Friday. Still ahead, a look at how the pandemic is affecting the funding used for teaching the students at area schools. And thinking about vacation soon? Well, there's a few stipulations you need to consider before you go. Details coming up next here on GMSA. Welcome back. Some people on summer vacation are learning they must quarantine when they return home as travel advisories are posted for major destinations. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, the surging coronavirus numbers and your summer vacation. With COVID-19 cases on the rise in parts of the country, there's new concern over travel in America. New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut saying those traveling from eight hotspot states must now quarantine for 14 days. Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Utah, and Texas on the list. New Yorker Andrew Kyle Brown is flying to Alabama. I'm worried about catching it in the plane on the way back. Experts say for travelers this summer will look very different. It's going to be a drive market. It's going to be domestic. People are going to stay home. They're going to be in America. International will come later, but right now it's domestic travel. And if your family is planning to travel across state lines this summer, we'll have the important information you need to know coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, thanks to COVID-19, fewer students will receive scholarships and laptops on Saturdays because of a lack in funding. As Jesse Dago other reports, due to the pandemic, the Cesar Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation hasn't been able to raise as much money as it has in the past. The annual Cesar Chavez March through the West Side, started by the late Jaime Martinez, wasn't the only way his son says his father honored the labor organizer who was his mentor. It was here that Martinez created a foundation to reward deserving high school graduates. This was something he really wanted to continue to do uh, for young people in San Antonio. The Marisol Cortezes of the world who are dreaming a vision of giving back. An interdisciplinary center where um, they both um, treat individuals with special needs um, and those um, suffering from mental health. Um, issues. On the south side where Cortez grew up and where she says it's most needed, the neuroscience major chose Bates College in Maine. I do want to help my community and I wanted to go to a school that is um, big on helping the community and serving them. Yet due to COVID-19, the foundation raised only $17,000 for scholarships and laptops, far short of the 35000 it hoped to raise. I believe 30 uh, applications that came in, uh, but we were able to honor 10. Who, much like Cortez, can say, I can be in politics, I can be in medicine, I can be in science, I can be a professor, I can do all these things and make an impact and a difference. Thanks, she says, to role models like Jaime Martinez. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 447, what do you say we check in with Officer Nick Solis? Ah, thanks, Mark. Hey, things are looking good right now. A uh, lot of green on the screen here. If you are headed to work, expect a smooth ride. Now, we had a little bit of construction on 35 and 1604, but it's not on the main lanes. And yesterday, that was cleared up by around 5 a.m., so that should you should be good to go if you're going through 35 and 1604 here in the next, uh, let's say, uh, 30 minutes or so. So let's take a look at some drive times. 10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, 12 minutes. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to IH-35, 13 minutes. So really good times there. That's good for everybody. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. 35 and Cesar Chavez looking great. Look at that. Looking wonderful there. Traffic's flowing smoothly. And 410 at Calabria looking wonderful. So it's early. We could try this out. You want us to call you Traffic Jam Solis, you said? <laughs> oh, Officer yeah. Traffic Jam. Love that name, Traffic Jam okay. Solis. Yeah. No, what was the other Let's one? The road? Roadblock. Roadblock Solis. Roadblock Road Solis. Solis. <laughs> we do that because I was thinking we could also do just in time for your forecast. <laughs> Dun, dun. I have not heard that one before. <laughs> <That's Okay. good. laughs> I mean, we don't have to do these. I'm I need just, you we're jumping just in front of the out. green screen saying, I'm just in time. Just in time. <laughs> I, I do like traffic jam, so at least that, Thank you. that has a good ring to it. I appreciate I that. That could really work. Thank you. Make it official on your Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make one. I got to make one. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, yesterday we did see a little bit of rain here across Bear County. It was it was a really nice sunset. I thought the dust would help us with the sunset. It was the rainstorm that really made for some beautiful colors. Let's take a look at the numbers uh, for June. We're at uh, 0.41 at the airport. That's three inches below average. So yeah, we could use a little bit of rain. We didn't get any yesterday at the airport, although some places around the area did. Officially, uh, nothing there. 13.59 for the year. We're about two inches below average there, too. And I'm sure some of you are watching and saying, well, hey, I got way more than that. And that's possible. And that's going to be the case again today because it'll be hit or miss. If you get underneath one of these downpours, it's going to put down some really good rain. Here's a look at the rainfall totals yesterday. And you can see how spotty it was. But the numbers were pretty big. Friedrich Park up there on the northwest side, 1.54 inches. Stone Oak about uh, 7 tenths. 
rest of San Antonio, nada. But we do got some showers and storms starting to develop uh, down to our south, and I think uh, this will be moving in a little bit later this morning and into the afternoon. Uh, looking at uh, radar right now, there you see the activity down there around Corpus and Beeville. This is lifting almost due north, and it's increased in size here just over the last hour or so, and I think we'll continue to see that trend uh, as we get later into the afternoon, especially as we zoom out some, uh, you can see there's quite a bit of moisture down there around Brownsville. That is some deep tropical moisture that is lifting north on the uh, west side of our ridge here. So uh, the flow is going to bring that into San Antonio uh, through the day today. Again, not everybody will see rain, but we have a better chance today than we did yesterday. We've also been talking about the dust. There it is and uh, still around. Uh, looks like that uh, it'll be fairly thick this afternoon, but you may not notice it because we have the clouds and rain around. If you do get some sunny skies, you could certainly notice a little bit of haze to the atmosphere. It'll be around tomorrow too, so we may notice a little bit more on Saturday, but by Sunday starts to uh, back off a little bit. And then next week, we may get another plume of some Saharan dust. So it, it remains pretty busy in uh, that department. Futurecast shows that uh, yes, we will see an increase in showers and storms as we get later into this morning. And then by say midday, fairly widespread. We're going to call for about a 60% chance of rain today. So we've upped the rain chances just a little bit more. And even by five o'clock, you see some of these downpours here. And when you get some of these clusters, that's where you could see rainfall totals two to three inches. It's possible. And that may cause some minor flooding and spots even around eight o'clock. We still got some showers and storms going. Now, once the sun goes down, you'll lose a lot of this activity outside right now. Mostly cloudy 77 dew point has jumped up close to 70 at this point. Most places in the mid to upper 70s this morning with that much moisture, we're not going to cool down much. Forecast calls for 84 noontime, 40% chance of rain, 60% chance 3 o'clock through 5 o'clock, and then rain chances will drop off a little bit. As I mentioned, once we lose some of that daytime heating, 20% chance tomorrow, 20% chance on Sunday. So uh, it's quieter over the weekend, 93 both days. And then next week is just hot and quiet. There's uh, not much rain in the forecast. So if you didn't get any rain yesterday, hopefully today, is your day. I hope it rains this after. I love a good afternoon thunderstorm, nap time. It timed out just about right yesterday for many of us. It just got kind of got dark early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, that dust cloud has got some punch to it, but it was <laughs> it was a storm, of course. Right now we're at 452, 77 degrees. Well, if you're looking for a way to lighten the mood after a tough week at work, we'll tell you about a couple of new comedies that are now streaming this weekend. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, five, one, fireball eight. Daily four numbers, one, nine, five, nine, fireball seven. Cash five, 10, 13, 16, 22, 30. And the Texas two step, two, 18, 19, 25, 33. If you need a little laugh this weekend, I think we all do. There are lots of new comedies available. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. More From Steve Carell to Will Ferrell, lots of stuff to stream this weekend. The political satire Irresistible stars Steve Carell and Rose Byrne as dueling political operatives. Why are you here? Because crushing the last piece of hope in your eyes really gets me off. The film written and directed by Jon Stewart, that's available for on-demand rental. I am Lars, this is Secret. Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams are Icelandic singers with a dream in Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga, out today on Netflix. And on Disney Plus, get the inside scoop on how they made the highest grossing animated movie in history with Into the Unknown, Making Frozen 2, a six episode docuseries also out today. The Will Ferrell movie focuses on the Eurovision Song Contest, which is one of the most watched events on TV every year, beating the Super Bowl. But director David Dobkin tells me he'd never heard of it before reading Ferrell's script. I think everybody in America, I think you'd say 95% don't know what this is. When you go to Europe, they all know. And by the way, in Europe, most of them love it, but there are a lot of people, especially like in the UK, that like can't stand it, and they all still watch it every year. Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga, also co-stars Demi Lovato and Pierce Brosnan. The Dixie Chicks, now just the chicks, dropping the word Dixie from the name of the band. This is they released the new protest anthem, March March. March, March to my own. No explanation given for the name change other than, quote, we wanted to meet the moment. And Ariana Grande saying thank you next to 26, the superstar singer turning 27 today, while actor and social media star King Batch is 30.
And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. About three minutes till right now, 77 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the surge in COVID-19 cases in San Antonio is affecting even our surrounding counties. A look at how it's affecting those rural hospitals. A look at why Verizon has become the latest company to boycott Facebook ads. Details in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, a man shot during what police say was an attempted robbery on the city's east side overnight. We have the latest details. And outlying counties are struggling to keep up as the number of coronavirus cases continues to increase. Outside with Lie Camp, very humid and another chance of storms. Justin is standing by with the latest and we'll take a peek at radar. Good morning. It is Friday. It is June 26th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Justin, I didn't get any rain on my, I live on the northeast side, but I know, Mark, you got some rain. And some other folks, and including yeah. some, uh, wow, good looking rainbow picture behind you there. Yeah, the, the rain was spotty yesterday, but it made for some picture, picturesque views. A lot of people had their phones out snapping some pictures, and rightfully so. This was a beautiful shot out of uh, Lavernia, of a couple of rainbows. Uh, the ever elusive double rainbow, but they caught it here. Beautiful job. Uh, with that picture and uh, we're going to get some more uh, great uh, opportunities to see some rain today. I think as uh, some showers and storms work their way in. Radar shows that uh, we've got some activity really starting to blossom here around Corpus Christi, but it's working north. So this is going to move in our direction here over the next couple of hours and we may see it expand some. So uh, I, I do think rain's a, a decent bet today and any of these showers and storms are going to put down some good rainfall. We've already seen that, that the rainfall rates are going to be pretty good. So there could be some minor flooding in spots, too. We're talking about a 60% chance of rain here. Uh, I'd say the, after midday is probably when we'll see the greatest coverage. But any time today, there is a possibility for some showers and storms. That should keep temperatures in the 80s. And uh, we'll see rain chances drop off as we get into tomorrow. So if you didn't get any rain today, hopefully you do get some a little bit uh, later today. We'll talk more about the rest of your forecast and look to next week here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick now and talk about uh, time saver traffic. How's it going? Yeah, things are going good, Justin. Thanks. Well, first, I hope everyone's having a great start to their morning. All right. Now, major highways looking good. Just had this accident pop up right here near Misty Plain and Echo Plain Drive. Don't know if there is an accident there or not as I was looking, but I'll try to get you more information on that if there is. All right, let's take a look outside at the Trans Guy. 281 in Hildebrand looking good there. Very little cars on the road. Things are looking good if you're heading out right now. 35 in Topper Wine, the same on the north side. That looks great there. And 35 at Brooklyn downtown looking wonderful. All right, everyone, just make sure go that speed limit, wear that seatbelt, and have a great day. Mark, Sarah, back to you. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a suspect in a shooting that happened east of downtown overnight. Police say it happened in the 200 block of Hub Avenue, just west of Interstate 10. Around 11.30 p.m., SAPD says the suspect approached a 20-year-old man and tried to rob him. That's when the victim tried to run away. But police say the suspect started shooting and hit the victim in the ear. The man was treated at the scene by EMS. Detectives are now investigating this incident. Well, the surge in cases in San Antonio is putting a strain on rural hospitals. Leaders in Maverick and Valverde County say ICU patients looking to be transferred to larger San Antonio hospitals are being put on waiting lists or rerouted. An Eagle Pass doctor says he's worried that if they have another surge like the one they're currently experiencing, they won't have the capacity to treat people. Rural hospitals report they can't get access to medicine like remdesivir to, to treat COVID-19 patients and their ventilators and ICU space is limited. The executive director for Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council says San Antonio hospitals are stressed. Only about 20 to 25 percent of ICU beds are available and with the wave being five times worse than the first, they are worried about the weeks ahead. The ICU capability is tight. Uh, but when we start running completely out of ICU beds, run out of hospital beds, and uh, that, that's when things will get really weird. The sooner we can address flattening this curve and um, stopping the spread, that can be prevented if we take the measures we have to and have personal responsibility for not just ourselves, but our family members, especially our vulnerable populations like our parents um, and our grandparents. 
Valverde County Judge Lewis Owen says their numbers went up by 100 cases in less than a month. They've also had issues transferring patients to larger hospitals. He hopes that by cracking down on masks and social distancing guidelines, rural communities can get a handle on the situation in about three weeks. But he says citizens need to begin taking personal responsibility for their own health by abiding by those guidelines. COVID-19 testing will continue to walk up sites today and again tomorrow. 300 free tests will be conducted at the Will Rogers Academy on McIlvain. Another 300 will be administered for free at the Health and Fitness Center at St. Philip's College. That's at the intersection of Hedges and Walters. Testing will take place each day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced some major adjustments in the way the criminal justice system here operates. But one major component, the grand jury, has continued to operate normally. Our Paul Venema takes a look at why the panel continues to work in spite of a moratorium on jury service. The sight of flashing lights and the sound of sirens are troubling reminders of one thing. Crime doesn't stop. And so the cases just keep on coming in. Assistant District Attorney Eddie Flores is in charge of the DA's grand jury section. Though there's that jury service moratorium resulting in a huge backlog, the grand juries must continue working. There is a deadline in play. There could potentially be very violent people that would get out of jail. Uh, if the cases aren't presented within 90 days, which is a statutory deadline, for felonies. Do you need to be solemnly swear? Two new grand juries were sworn in this week to hear the new cases. They'll relieve the current grand juries. Flores says they've done marathon duty, reviewing nearly 3,000 cases. The grand juries have continued to have met as scheduled every single day throughout this whole pandemic. With cases filed daily by law enforcement, Flores is already preparing this group of jurors. They'll begin their service next week with a warning. It is possible if, if you know, things get worse with the virus, they could be extended again, just like this other grand jury. They'd have no options. The work they do is vital, according to Flores. Without them, uh, the criminal justice system will literally come to a halt. Paul Venema, Case at 12 News. 507, 77 degrees. Still ahead, an old poster signed by Apple co-founder Steve Jobs just sold at auction. We'll tell you how much it took in. And next, latest on a recall affecting hundreds of thousands of Toyota vehicles. Let's take a, a look outside with live cam. It is 507, 77 degrees. The Saharan dust is here, everyone. Justin will let you know about that when we come back. In your morning consumer headlines, Independence Day could shape up to be the biggest road trip event of the year. Travel data company Arrivalist predicts more than 36 million Americans will hit the road for the July 4th holiday weekend. That's still about 11 percent less than last year's predictions. The coronavirus pandemic is also expected to slow down travel for the entire summer. AAA says Americans will take 700 million trips in July, August and September. That's 120 million fewer trips than last year. The decline is mostly because of reduced air, bus, rail and cruise travel. Toyota recalling hundreds of thousands of electric vehicles over an issue with its failsafe mode. It encompasses approximately 267,000 Prius models in the U.S. According to Toyota, the failsafe driving mode, excuse me, in certain vehicles does not act as intended. Because of that, the vehicle could lose power and stall, which increases the risk of a crash. Recall focuses on certain 2013 to 2015 Prius models and other Prius models made from 2014 through 2017. Toyota plans to notify affected owners of the recall by late August. They say owners can take their cars to dealers for an update to the system software at no charge. Over the past few weeks, we've highlighted many outstanding high school seniors who stand out from the graduating class of 2020. And now we'd like to show off some of our area university great graduates. This week, we're introducing you to a Trinity University graduate who not only graduated with a triple major, but is continuing her education through a master's program. Camila Acosta is a triple threat. During her four years at Trinity University, she was able to graduate with three majors. I took an average of about 17 hours per semester. 
um, which can seem a little intense at first, but once you get used to the workload, it really isn't that bad. Camila is passionate about Latin American studies and education. It's why she majored in Spanish, international studies, and global Latina X studies. That love for her culture stems from her family. She says her mom was born and raised in Mexico, and her dad's family comes from Puerto Rico. But her mother, a dual language teacher, also instilled in her the urge to go into education. I like the fact that as an educator, you can be such a great inspiration. She says it's why she is pursuing her dream of being a high school Spanish teacher and getting her master's in education at Trinity University. Instilling that sense of I love learning or I love learning about a specific thing, that inspiration for the next generation is what I think education is really great at doing. She says it can be tough for students navigating their way through college and finding their identity. Her advice to students? Finding that community and establishing that community um, is really helpful as a support system. We all need a support system. We all need someone to kind of hold our hand when things are rough and push us forward when we think we can't do it. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Camilla Acosta, not related to our Sarah, also has all of her master's program at Trinity fully funded through a couple of scholarships. One of them being the Charles Butt Scholarship Raising Texas Teachers Program. She was just such a joy to, I was like, are we, we we're not related, right? She's you like, wanted to be. I wanted to be because she was just so <laughs> articulate. I mean, she is going to make such a great teacher in her future. She's got big, big plans for her. We, we all wish her the very, very best. 514, 77 degrees. Well, remember the popular children's book series, The Magic School Bus? I sure do. Well, buckle up, everyone, because there's a new live action movie in the works. And next, a major cell phone provider, now the biggest company so far to boycott over hate speech on Facebook. Mornings were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis. When considering another treatment, ask about Zeljans, a pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis when methotrexate has not helped enough. Zeljans can reduce pain, swelling, and further joint damage, even without methotrexate. Zeljans can lower your ability to fight infections. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections like TB and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms or are prone to infections, serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zeljans for RA may increase risk of death. Tears in the stomach or intestines and serious allergic reactions have happened. Don't let another morning go by without asking your doctor about the pill first prescribed for RA more than seven years ago, Zeljans. Welcome back. I want to let you know about a nasty thunderstorm that's now moving into the fringe of our southeastern counties right now. Justin says a tornado warning is now in effect for Southern Bee County through 545. He will have the very latest and a look at radar coming up in just a moment. But first, Verizon, now the biggest company to boycott advertising on Facebook. Here's ABC's Kenneth Moten. In today's Tech Bytes, Verizon is joining a growing boycott of Facebook. The world's largest telecommunications company is withholding advertising until Facebook does more to crack down on hate speech. It is part of a movement organizers are calling Stop Hate for Profit. Apple says it is reclosing 14 locations in Florida because of concerns about the coronavirus. It's the second time those stores will be shutting down amid the pandemic. Since last week, Apple has also reclosed stores in Texas, Arizona, and the Carolinas. A very rare poster autographed by the late Steve Jobs just fetched $12,000 at an auction is from Next Computer, a company founded by Jobs in 1985 after he was forced out of Apple. By the way, Apple ended up buying Next Computer, bringing Jobs back and making him a very, very rich man. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. All right, folks. We want to pass along a uh, tornado warning, as Mark mentioned, down there around Bee County. This is going to go until 545 a.m. It's for this storm you see down here where we have the tornado warning. Uh, there's, it looks like there's a little bit of rotation with this, and sometimes when we get this tropical moisture, we can get these quick little spin-ups. Uh, but the, the tornado warning has been issued uh, by the Corpus Office down there for Southern Bee County. And uh, we'll try to zoom in a little bit for you here and show you exactly uh, where this storm is located. Uh, again, southern fringes of our viewing area here, but uh, we certainly don't want to leave you out if you're watching us down there in uh, southern Bee County. And it's this storm right here, just north of Mathis. 
and uh, just south of Beeville that we're watching. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the uh, velocity on there. And it's right there where you see the green and the red. That shows where we have a little bit of rotation with uh, the, the winds moving away from the radar and then when you have the red towards the radar and that can sometimes indicate a little bit of a spin up. Looks pretty broad at the moment, uh, but the, and this is coming from the uh, Corpus radar by the way, but uh, certainly uh, some concern there and the tornado warning goes until 545. So if you're watching us south of Beeville, go ahead and take cover from this storm. Looks like it's a fairly dangerous one as it moves off to the north. In general, we're not expecting a lot of severe weather today, but when you get this tropical moisture again, you can get some of these spin ups like this and uh, we can certainly see some heavy downpours too. So let's put this back on radar and show you one more time again. It's this storm here and that tornado warning goes until 545. We had another little spin up uh, just west of Corpus a little bit earlier that we were also watching. So let's uh, zoom out and show you what's going on around the rest of the area. We've got some good rain showing up uh, west of Corpus at this hour and this is all trying to uh, move off to the north. And I think we're going to get some of this here in San Antonio uh, through the day as this uh, deeper moisture starts to move in. We'll put it into motion there and uh, we'll take the uh, take the warnings off just for a second. Uh, we've got some of the lightning strikes uh, posted there too. Uh, quite a bit of lightning with this and it's going to be electrical today. Uh, again, the threat for severe weather is really actually on the low end. Uh, but we are seeing that warning there this morning and look for an increase as these showers and storms work north here over the next couple of hours. We've got rain chances pegged at about 60% today. So here's our future cast and it does show that these uh, showers and storms will begin to increase in coverage a little bit as we get later into this morning and then by midday we should have these around. It'll be hit or miss, but if you do get underneath one of these storms, the rainfall rates are pretty impressive. They're going to create some minor flooding, I think, in spots. We got to look out for that. And then as we get into the afternoon, show some nice clusters here. And anywhere we do get these sort of clusters coming together, uh, it may cause some flooding, as we mentioned. Today is probably our best chance of rain, by the way. As we get into tomorrow, this deeper moisture moves away and uh, we'll say goodbye to rain chances for the most part. Uh, outside right now, we've got uh, cloudy skies, 77 degrees. Dew point is way up there, very humid. And south southeast chilly winds right now at about 8 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 70s for the most part. Uh, 75 Catula, 76 Kennedy, 80 there in Corpus, and they are dealing with a few thunderstorms. Forecast calls for 60% chance of rain noontime through 3 o'clock. We'll start to see those rain chances taper off as we go into tonight and we lose some of the daytime heating. Temperatures should be kept down a little bit today because of the cloud cover and chance for rain. Just a 20% chance Saturday and Sunday. We'll also see some warmer temperatures as we get into next week. And I think now we're going to talk about traffic. Oh yeah, some traffic. Everything's looking good right now uh, out there. Look at all that green. Uh, no hot spots, no red, yellow. If you are headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride uh, because things are looking good. You got time for a pit stop here. Look at these drive times. 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10, six minutes. And if you're 281 southbound from Bolverde to 1604, five minutes. So really good times there. Always good. Let's take a look at the trans guide. Now 281 at Hildebrand looking very smooth. 35 at Topper wine looking great. That southbound, those southbound lanes getting a little bit moderate though. 35 at Brooklyn downtown, that's flowing smoothly both uh, both ways. And 35 at Cesar Chavez down the road looks very good. All right, everyone, please get to work safely today and uh, have a great day. Right now on KSAT.com, we have plenty of critter stories to keep you entertained. And one that's been trending is about snake sightings. Experts with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension says that this is the time of year snake sightings drastically increase. So what can you do? Two things that homeowners can do is remove potential shelter and food and keep storage areas as clean and tidy as possible. Snakes can fit through tiny openings and easily hide in areas like wood and brush piles. In a press release sent to KSAT, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension says it's also important to teach children not to reach inside crevices. The common venomous snakes in South Texas are copperheads, cottonmouths, rattlesnakes, and coral snakes. For more about these snakes and how to distinguish them, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's 523 and 77 degrees. Up next, more on a new movie and the long-running children's classic book, The Magic School Bus. 
The Dixie Chicks are now just the chicks, and the lead role announced an upcoming movie based on a popular children's book series. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. March March, complete with footage of protest marches past and present, is the latest single and video from Gaslighter, the upcoming album from The Chicks. Who? The country pop trio previously known as the Dixie Chicks. The group posted the name change on their website, noting, we want to meet this moment. They follow fellow country artist Lady Antebellum changing their name to Lady A. Just keep that head up, don't you worry, it will be that familiar voice is part of another, more temporary trio. Sir Elton John has teamed with Texas-based duo Surfaces for Learn to Fly. In a press release, the music legend said, We recorded via Zoom in LA and it was so much fun working on a non-Elton record. These guys are terrific and we had a blast collaborating. This Elizabeth Banks is taking the wheel of the Magic School Bus. She's set to star as Ms. Frizzle in a movie based on the long-running children's book series about a teacher who takes her class on field trips in a magic bus. Banks will also produce the combination live-action and animated film. After 80 million books in print and two TV series, this will be the first time the Magic School Bus flies on the big screen. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I, I don't remember reading it, but you said this works, having Elizabeth Banks oh, on board. Oh, she's, because she's kind of nutty, and Miss Frizzle was like, real yeah. nutty, you know. Oh, just like that. <laughs> she, and she broke all the laws of physics. There you go. <laughs> right now we're at 528, 77 degrees. We're still ahead in our next half hour. Cases of the coronavirus, they keep climbing in the U.S., and Thursday was a record-setting day. We'll have reaction from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. In this week's Flavor Phase, we head to a popular eatery in Southtown, doing it all that they can to serve customers in the middle of the pandemic. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is June 26th. And for some folks in our southeastern counties, the weather might be interesting over the next hour or so. That's right. Justin was talking about a tornado warning in South B County. Yeah, and it's still there. It goes till 545 this morning. That warning is uh, right there south of Beeville. Now I got to tell you the last look, I just looked at some of the velocity, which tells us where potential rotation would be. Looks like this is starting to sort of fall apart, and that's going to be the nature. If, if we see any severe weather or anything like that, it's going to be these quick spin ups that uh, it would be a weak circulation, but it was there, and that's why they issued uh, the tornado warning a little bit earlier. So let's uh, pause it here, and we will put it on uh, velocity. And it's right there. If there's any sort of circulation, again, I think at this point it looks pretty weak. It would be right there. This will probably be allowed to expire, but we got to be careful. And if you're south of Beeville, Southern Bee County here, this is Mathis and uh, Corpus just to the south of that. This is an area where you would want to take cover from this storm. Otherwise, it's just going to be heavy rain. And that's going to be really the main threat, I think, today with a lot of this activity is uh, going to be rainfall. So let's zoom out some and uh, take a look at what's going on here around uh, San Antonio. And right now we're still pretty quiet. Uh, there's not much going on, but this activity down to our south is going to lift north today, and we should see more scattered downpours as we get later into this morning and certainly into the afternoon. We'll keep tabs on it. 74 degrees right now, Boulevardy. 75 New Braunfels, 75 Port SA. We're at 77 at the airport. Rain chances should be pretty good through the noon hour into uh, early afternoon. We'll start to taper rain chances off a little bit this evening, but they'll still be there. And they'll look for temperatures to be in the upper 80s for high, so a little bit cooler thanks to the clouds and potentially some of that rainfall. So far, we haven't heard about any issues on the, the roads, but let's check in with Nick for the latest. Yeah, Justin, things are looking great right now. If you are headed to work, you have time to make a pit stop, get some gas, get a Boston cream, something, because things are looking good out there. Just look at these drive times. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 99 minutes. 90 eastbound from 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. So great times there. Expect a smooth commute if you're headed to work right now. Look at 410 in Calabria. Things are, are flowing very smoothly there. That's not bad at all. Very light to moderate traffic. 35 at Martin downtown. The same things are flowing very smoothly and good. And 10 at Ralph Fair. Hardly any cars on the road going towards 1604. All right, everyone. Well, please have a safe and wonderful morning. Make sure to wear that seatbelt and go to the speed limit. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, sir. Right now, we're staying on top of late breaking news in West Bear County. Our Katrina Weber just arrived on the scene of a shooting. And Katrina, I'm gathering information. Well, good morning. What can, yes. tell, what can you tell us? I'm so, 
Sorry, I didn't mean to jump the gun there. Uh, we are in the 9800 block of Misty Plain. This is where a sheriff's deputies have found a man who was shot. Now you'll see a car in the front yard of this house. The window shot out in the back. That's where they found the man after his car crashed into uh, that Jeep or that truck in the driveway there. Uh, they say that this man was shot in his back and also grazed in his head. He was rushed to a hospital. Uh, sheriff's office was not able to give us an exact update on his condition just yet, but they say he he was alert and talking to them. However, he was not telling them everything that they need to know. They say he was not exactly being cooperative, so they're not sure where he was shot. But just within the last couple of minutes, they did expand the scene and uh, we noticed that it seems that they found some evidence, perhaps shell casings, down on this other street here. So it looks like uh, at least that may be where some of the shots were fired. They're working in that area right now, still collecting uh, more evidence. And just to give you a perspective, this is uh, West Bear County in the area of Crewald Road, if you're familiar with that, sort of uh, very close to uh, Loop 1604 and Highway 90. This neighborhood here is where it appears that this shooting happened. And again, the man rushed to the hospital with at least two gunshot wounds. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The White House Coronavirus Task Force, led by the Vice President Mike Pence, holding its first public meeting in nearly two months. California, Florida, and Texas are getting hit especially hard. Well, the Baylor College of Medicine says if current trends continue, Houston could end up the most affected city in North America. CNN's John Lawrence has more. COVID-19 has infected more than 2.4 million Americans and counting. We have to deal with this as a as a country, you know, not not in this sort of piecemeal fashion. More than 37,000 new confirmed cases were reported in the US Thursday, according to Johns Hopkins University. That's nearly 800 above the previous high from April. If you let everybody out without face masks and without social in the middle of a pandemic, this is what was predict predicted. 60% of the country is reporting increases in week-to-week -week new cases, with 13 states seeing a rise of at least 50%. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says for every COVID-19 diagnosis, there are 10 others that were missed. The only good news in this is that the death rate has gone down somewhat as uh, we're learning how to treat people better, we're less overloaded. But uh, the global picture and the U.S. picture are both uh, more bleak than I would have expected. And medical experts say inaction is not an option. If we don't do something, um, and I mean really strong, on containment, surveillance, contact tracing, and isolation, we're in for a very, very rough time. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, Texas Children's Hospital in Houston is changing its policy to help create some additional space for COVID-19 patients. COVID-19 hospitalizations in Texas have more than doubled in the last month. At this rate, officials say Texas Medical Center Group hospitals will run out of regular ICU beds in two weeks. Normal ICU capacity at TMC hospitals is 14,062. In emergencies, the hospital can double that. The House of Representatives has passed police reform legislation named in honor of George Floyd. The measure passed mostly along party lines with Republicans Brian Fitzpatrick, Will Hurd of San Antonio, and Fred Upton crossing the aisle. The bill bans chokeholds at the federal level and forbids no-knock warrants on federal drug cases, but has little chance of being taken up by the Republican-led Senate. Republican and Democrats in both chambers of Congress have called for quick action to address police misconduct, but... They have not yet found common ground on exactly how to do that. Well, Argentina is facing an astonishing locust plague. Let's look at that. Millions of these insects have arrived from Paraguay and are on their way to Uruguay and southern Brazil. The country's national food safety body is currently working in several areas to try to control the swarm. I had to look this up. There's a difference between cheat cicadas, or known as chichadas in South Texas, mm -hmm. and locusts. Uh, locusts, yeah. I that, that's, I've never seen that many cicadas in my life, so <laughs> it definitely, I think, falls under the locust category. 538, 77 degrees. Well, are you hungry for some healthy comfort food? Just ahead, we'll take you to the good kind to see what kind of dishes they are cooking up for customers. And it's a dilemma for millions of Americans. Uh, stay home this summer or actually go on some sort of summer vacation. We'll have details on advisories posted for many popular destinations. Taking a look outside with live cam at 77 degrees and 
Will we see rain? Will there be dust in that rain? There's a lot of going, there's a lot going on with weather. Justin will tell you about that in just a bit. Now to the dilemma millions of us Americans are facing. Do we actually go on some sort of summer vacation? Well, travelers are now facing a possible quarantine when they return home. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details. This morning, new concern about summer travel with COVID-19 cases on the rise in the South and West. New York, New Jersey and Connecticut say people traveling from eight states must now quarantine for 14 days. Probably necessary. I, I don't know. It was very different down in Florida than it is up here. Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Utah and Texas are on the list. People are going to stay home. They're going to be in America. International will come later, but right now it's domestic travel, closer to home, and then venturing out a little further. Andrew Kyle Brown from New York is flying to Alabama. I'm worried about catching it in the plane on the way back. Air travel has slowly been rising since hitting a record low in the spring. But with anxiety creeping back in, AAA predicts 97% of travel this summer will be by car. I think that's in correlation with the increased number of cases that we're seeing in the southern states. The new travel restrictions take effect with some people already on their summer vacations. U.S. health officials are hoping to avoid scenes like this, a beach in England packed with thousands of people this week, just as the virus reemerges in Europe. This video from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, shows crowded beaches could soon be an American problem as well. Nobody cares. Nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's. I haven't seen a glove. I haven't seen any attempt to protect anybody from anything. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. 543, still 77 degrees. Up next in our latest edition of Flavor Faves, we take you to a Southtown restaurant that's cooking up some healthy comfort food. 546, as many restaurants try to figure out how to survive the pandemic, the good kind in Southtown here in San Antonio is thankful they've been able to keep their doors open. And this week's Flavor Faves, Erica Hernandez shows off the eatery's outdoor seating and menu that's still available. Like all places in town, the good kind has had to switch gears several times because of the current pandemic. It's just like from one minute to the next, I'm like, I keep telling my friends, I'm like, I'm so tired of pivoting. I feel like the exorcist. I'm just like, my head is just spinning. Like every minute is a different thing. Chef and owner of the good kind, Tim McDiarmid, has gone from scaling back her menu to a meal delivery service and now hosting social distancing, speed dating and film series events. One of the advantages here at The Good Kind is all this outside space. You can grab a meal and eat out here. We are very fortunate that we have, like I said, an acre of outdoor space. Um, as you can see here, I mean, we've always had our tables really spaced. We have counter service so people don't have to be inside very long. Of course, everyone is wearing masks and we have sanitizer and all the guidelines. Um, but I think people do feel pretty safe here. And the food will get ready for some healthy comfort food. I still have tried, really kept with my brand in the way that even when though we've added hamburgers and, you know, we have chicken wings and cauliflower wings, just more sort of bar friendly food because we have a full mixed beverage license. But still everything is made with really high quality ingredients and we try to keep it on the lighter side. The Good Kind is located at 1127 South St. Mary's and their hours are four to nine Monday through Friday and 11 to nine on Saturday and Sunday. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Time check 548. Well, I know we have an accident officer Solis on 281 you said in Grayson. Yeah, it's going to be 281 at Grayson right before 35, the exit to 35. Looks like it's a motor, uh, motorcycle accident, uh, and uh, there's a lot of officers on scene. Hopefully they can get this cleared. I saw a wrecker is on the way there, but yeah, it's right here. Looks like it's starting to get a little slick outside. Justin will have more about that, but be careful. Watch your speed when going down 281. Those winding roads can get dangerous. Let's take a look at this accident. So here it is. This is the 281 at Grayson camera. It's right before that 35 southbound exit. Uh, just please be careful there. I know those lights are bright and they can blind you, so just slow your speeds down when you see them.
storms has mm -hmm. been down your corpus this morning, but yep. uh, as Nick was saying, we're starting to see a few sprinkles here in town, Justin. Yeah, not a lot of returns on radar, but I just mm -hmm. stepped outside and then there is a little bit of light rain coming down. Mm -hmm. It's always just, you know, that little bit that can cause uh, the roads to be a little bit slick. So uh, take it slow out there, as Nick mentioned. And the tornado warning that we had earlier, guys, has since expired down there around Beeville. So the good news there, uh, we had a quick little, what looks like spit up. No report of uh, tornado or anything like that. It was just radar indicated. And uh, now uh, we just got some good rain out there. There's a look at the live radar. You can see where the bulk of the action is down there around Beeville, South Pleasanton. And we'll go ahead and put this uh, radar into motion for you uh, so you can get an idea of where everything's moving. So everything's moving south to north here. And this is a good slug of moisture that's coming in from South Texas, deep South Texas. And that'll be moving into San Antonio a little bit later this morning. We think we have a decent chance for some downpours today. You'll see the, the radar sort of like look like this with these pop up showers and storms where you see these white lines. That's an indication of, of lightning, and we've seen uh, these storms be fairly electrical as well. So let's go ahead and put a tracker on this activity. It's moving north at about uh, 20 miles an hour or so, and uh, let's see there. Yeah, well, not big enough there, but uh, it does look like it'll move up towards Atascosa County, Wilson County. I'd say over the next hour or so, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get some of that activity moving towards San Antonio as well. Let's do this, and we'll make it sort of a bigger swath here as it uh, moves north at about uh, 20 miles per hour, as I mentioned. Uh, there we go. So uh, places like Kennedy, uh, you may see that move in a little bit later. Current City 618. We'll keep track of these showers and storms as they move in our direction. But the good news is that we do have some rain chances today. A little bit better chance than we saw yesterday. And even then, we did see some activity yesterday uh, evening. Some places did see some decent rainfall. Here's a look at the future cast. And this is one of our computer models, our high resolution models. And it does show that the rain will be increasing and moving north as we get towards 9 o'clock this morning. By midday, showers and storms will be around. So if you are headed to work today, go ahead and grab the umbrella as you walk out the door. You'll want it. Uh, just in case some of these downpours move in your direction. Around 5 o'clock shows more activity and where you see some of these clusters that may build up, we're going to worry about uh, heavy rain. I think some places could see 2 to 3 inches, but it'll be very isolated. So uh, it just depends on uh, where the, these uh, sort of clusters set up. Even around 8 o'clock, we'll still see some rain out there, but by that point, with the last daytime heating, we should see some of this start to wind down. These are the observed rainfall totals over the last 24 hours. And yesterday, places like Friedrich Park saw 1.5 inches. That was on the far northwest side there. It was very isolated, uh, but the numbers were good. And that just goes to show you that the, these can be efficient rain producers. Gonzalez saw a little bit of rain yesterday. Floresville picked up over an inch as well. So the numbers were good, and I think we'll see more uh, numbers like that today. 77 degrees right now, cloudy skies, most places are in the 70s at this hour, 75 in Floresville, 74 Gonzales, 76 in Kennedy with rain just to your south. So the forecast for today, 60% chance of rain noontime through 3 o'clock. We'll taper the rain chances off a little bit as we get into this evening. 20% uh, chance tomorrow and Sunday temperatures start to crank up as we lose the cloud cover and the rain chances upper 90s next week. And by the way, we're still tracking that dust cloud too. It'll be around today and into the weekend too. Guys, thank you, Justin. 5.52 on your Friday morning. Still ahead, the tour of de France was originally scheduled to begin tomorrow, but it's been postponed until August due to the pandemic. But the race can still be run, though, in video game form. We'll show you how next. Here are your pick three numbers. 151, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 1959, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 10, 13, 16, 22, 30. And the Texas two step two eighteen nineteen twenty five thirty three. your marks, get set, go. While the 107th running of the Tour de France has been rescheduled due to the coronavirus pandemic, the Tour can still be run in Tour de France 2020, the official game of the bicycle race. The game is no mere simulation. It features all 21 stages of the Tour de France and challenges players to manage their stamina and riding position. Which means if you want to rock the yellow jersey on the Champs-Élysées, you will have to fight for it and play the game much like a real rider. 
And if you really want to imagine the feel of the wind in your face, this year's edition of the game includes a new first-person point-of-view mode. Tour de France 2020 is out now for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and in another series first, is scheduled to release for PC players at a later date. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Back here at home, a crucial conversation on domestic violence in our community. KSAT joining San Antonio Metro Health to hold a town hall and phone bank later today. Courtney Friedman will moderate from 2 to 3 p.m. discussing the issue with a group of panelists from law enforcement, health care, and advocacy backgrounds. And experts will be ready to take your calls to answer questions about domestic violence and ways to get help. You can stream the town hall on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app. And right now on KSAT.com, you can also submit domestic violence questions that you would like us to ask our panelists. It's about three till right now on your Friday morning. So glad you're with us still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA. The Trump administration once again hoping the Supreme Court will end the Affordable Care Act. We'll have more details on a late night filing by the U.S. Department of Justice. Trans Guide, we've got a little moisture on some of the roads right now. And at 281 in Grayson, we've got quite a few flashing lights. Uh, Officer Nick Solis is tracking that and we'll get an update on storms to the southeast of San Antonio. They are quite active this morning. Justin will have an update and a new warning. The White House Coronavirus Task Force having a public briefing today, the first in almost two months. We'll have a preview of what to expect. As the number of cases in the U.S. continues to surge, find out why the CDC says the number of those infected is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. That story coming up. Starting to rain in some small in some parts of San Antonio right now. Just a light rain. Our Justin Horn has an update on a severe warning just south of us. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is June 26th. And we have, we have a few showers around here, but the bulk of the nasty weather is still way down by closer to Corpus Christi than San Antonio. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's real south of Mathis. Isn't that right? Justin? Yeah, yeah, the warning we have right now is southwest of Mathis. So this is on the far reaches of our viewing area, but I know we do have some people watching from Live Oak County, so we want to keep you updated there. It's this storm here, and this is issued by the Corpus Office. They continue to see just a little bit of rotation in some of this activity. It's this tropical air mass, and sometimes you can get these little spin-ups. But this warning goes until 6.30 this morning. It's for southern uh, Live Oak County there. You see Mathis, Beeville off to the uh, north and west. And what I'm going to do is put this on velocity mode, see if we can pick up on that rotation. Where you see sort of that pink color, that is where we could be looking at a little bit of rotation with this. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. Again, this is almost due west of Mathis at this point. And if this storm were to continue on its current trajectory, it would move up towards George West. But right now, this, this rotation looks pretty weak to me. It doesn't mean that there's not a tornado mixed in there. Uh, but anything we see, uh, again, I think is going to be fairly weak as far as tornadoes are concerned. But we still got to be careful with this. And uh, folks there in southern Live Oak County, go ahead and take cover from this storm. And on top of this, this weak rotation, we're also seeing some very heavy rain with this. Uh, so let's zoom out now and talk about what's going on up here around San Antonio. So far, we haven't seen much rain. Uh, it has been uh, generally just uh, some light stuff. We have had a little bit of light rain reported around San Antonio, although it's not really being picked up on radar. But it is there this morning. There could be some slick roads, and Nick will talk about that in just a second. Uh, these showers down around Corpus are moving north. We expect this deeper moisture to start to move in a little bit later this morning and into the afternoon. So rain chances today about 60%. Scattered downpours is what we're calling for. And uh, we'll see uh, some heavy rain mixed in there as well. We're going to have much more on this entire forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. But we have had a few issues on the roadways. Let's check in with Nick. Yeah. That one accident we had on 281 and uh, guessing say 35 is now cleared up. Good news for everybody there. Not going to cause a major delay if you're going southbound 281 near 35. So this accident is no more. But like Justin was saying, things are slick out there. So uh, just please be careful, especially on parkways like Wurz Wurzbach Parkway 281 right here in Grayson. That can get very dangerous when just a little slick. So please watch your speed. Go the speed limit. Um, Wear your seatbelt. We want everyone to get into work safely. Other than that, things are looking good all around the city. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. 
Thank you, Nick. Right now we continue with coverage of late breaking news over in West Bear County. Our Katrina Weber, she is live at the scene of a shooting. Katrina, what can you tell us at this point? Well, good morning. Uh, sheriff's investigation is brand new. This uh, is occurring within the last hour. We're in the 9800 block of Misty Plain here in West Bear County. Sheriff's uh, uh, investigators initially uh, we're responding to what appeared to be an accident, but as it turned out, the driver of the car actually was shot. And that is the reason he crashed into this truck here in the driveway. Uh, the rear window of that car is shot out. And sheriff's deputies told me that the driver had sustained a gunshot wound to his back and also was grazed on his head by a bullet. That is why he crashed into the front yard here. They say he was alert and talking, though, but not exactly giving them the information they need to solve this case. So right now they don't know who did the shooting. They don't have anyone in custody. The driver of this car was taken to a hospital, and that's where the investigation pretty much leaves off. They did find what appeared to be shell casings here on this nearby street. And so, again, all of this just getting underway here within this past hour. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering in the hospital after being hit by a passing vehicle on Loop 410 South. According to police, it happened around 2 this morning on Loop 410 near Somerset Road when a driver hit a guardrail and spun out into the median. According to officials, the driver then got out of the got out of his car, ran back up onto the highway and was clipped by another car. Then that second vehicle spun out. The driver of the first car was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. There is no word on the condition of the driver in that second vehicle. In our next half hour, our Katrina Weber will be live at that scene with the latest. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect in a shooting that happened east of downtown overnight. According to police, it happened just before 1130 last night in the 200 block of Hub Avenue. That's just west of I-10. Officers say a man in his 20s was approached by another man who tried to rob him. That's when police say the victim ran off and the suspect started shooting, grazing the victim in the ear. The victim was treated at the scene by EMS. An investigation is now underway. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. It's the largest increase in COVID cases we've seen in one day since the start of this pandemic. More than 600 cases added in just last 24 hours and about a third of all those COVID-19 patients in the hospital are now in the ICU. So let's take a look at some of those numbers here in Bear County. We now have a total of 8,452 COVID-19 cases. There are no new deaths to report, so the death toll remains at 104 people. While more than 3,000 people have recovered from COVID-19, 5,300 are still fighting this virus. Only 25% of staff beds are available for Bear County. 628 people remain in the hospital. 202 of those people are in the ICU. As you wait day by day, the risk of the false negative goes down and the chances that you would have a true positive goes up. And your best chance of having a true positive test is going to be eight days after a significant exposure. That's Dr. Ruth Berggren, an infectious disease specialist at UT Health San Antonio. She answered many coronavirus related questions during a Q&A with KSAT last night. Right now on KSAT.com, we have the full interview where she talks about who should get tested, what is the significant exposure to the virus, and when you should get tested if you've been exposed, among other questions. Again, for the full Q&A, you can head over to our website at KSAT.com. Well, if you're looking for a place where to get tested, COVID-19 testing will continue at two walk-up sites today and Saturday. 300 free tests will be conducted at the Will Rogers Academy on McIlvain. Another 300 tests will be given for free at the Health Fitness Center at St. Phillips College. That's the intersection of Hedges and Walters. Testing will take place each day from 10 in the morning to 2 p.m. 607 right now, the White House Coronavirus Task Force will hold its first briefing in almost two months today as cases continue to escalate in more than half the country. The U.S. has nearly two and a half million confirmed cases of coronavirus and nearly 125,000 known deaths so far. ABC's Karina Mitchell, she has the latest. Faced with surging coronavirus cases, Texas now reversing plans to move forward with the next phase of reopening as the state records a record number of hospitalizations. So my dad's hanging on by a thread. They're in there by themselves with no family. 
you know, and it's just heartbreaking. His father, one of 18 members of one Texas family infected after attending a surprise birthday party. Arizona, Delaware and New Mexico also slamming on the brakes, pausing plans to reopen. All this while a debate rages about whether masks are necessary. From California. Are you going to allow the government to tell you you have to wear a mask? No! To Arizona. I can't breathe. To Florida. It's our bodies. It's our choice whether we're going to wear them, not wear them. You guys are overstepping your boundaries. Doctors reinforcing how vital face coverings are. Yeah, masks are an absolutely critical component to uh, really ending this pandemic. A new model from the University of Washington suggests that some 33,000 lives could be saved by October 1st if nearly everyone wears a mask. And now a stunning revelation from the CDC that for every coronavirus case they have confirmed, 10 people more are likely infected. The CDC estimating 20 million people in the U.S. have been infected with the virus. That's about 6% of the population. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. President Donald Trump is hoping the U.S. Supreme Court will end Obamacare in its entirety. In a late night filing last night, Department of Justice asked the court to invalidate the law. U.S. Solicitor General argued the ACA should be nullified if the law's individual coverage mandate and two key provisions are invalidated. The Supreme Court looking at the issue about whether the law's individual mandate was rendered unconstitutional after Congress reduced its penalty. The justices will hear arguments in the case sometime in the next term. The Affordable Care Act has enabled millions of Americans to get health insurance coverage. Right now we're at 610, now 76 degrees. Verizon is withholding advertising on Facebook. What the company is saying about the reason behind the boy boycott, that's still ahead on GMSA. And we are highlighting a Trinity University graduate, not only graduated with a triple major, but is continuing her higher, higher education. That's in today's great graduates coming up here on GMSA. Let's take a look outside as the sun is still trying to peek out those clouds, but we do have some slick roads out there, and Officer Nick Solis will tell you about those, and Justin will tell you about a severe warning in the southern part of our viewing area. Well, we have introduced you to countless outstanding high school seniors who stand out from the graduating class of 2020, and now we'd like to introduce you to some of our area university great graduates. Today we are highlighting a Trinity University graduate who not only graduated with three majors, but is continuing on with a master's program. Camila Acosta is a triple threat. During her four years at Trinity University, she was able to graduate with three majors. I took an average of about 17 hours per semester. Um, which can seem a little intense at first, but once you get used to the workload, it really isn't that bad. Camila is passionate about Latin American studies and education. It's why she majored in Spanish, international studies, and global Latina X studies. That love for her culture stems from her family. She says her mom was born and raised in Mexico, and her dad's family comes from Puerto Rico. But her mother, a dual language teacher, also instilled in her the urge to go into education. I like the fact that as an educator, you can be such a great inspiration. She says it's why she is pursuing her dream of being a high school Spanish teacher and getting her master's in education at Trinity University. Instilling that sense of I love learning or I love learning about a specific thing, that inspiration for the next generation is what I think education is really great at doing. She says it can be tough for students navigating their way through college and finding their identity. Her advice to students? Finding that community and establishing that community um, is really helpful as a support system. We all need a support system. We all need someone to kind of hold our hand when things are rough and push us forward when we think we can't do it. Sarah Costa. Well, that was obviously me reporting, but Camila, no, we are not related. We just have the same last name. Also, her entire master's program at Trinity has been fully funded through scholarships. Oh, yeah, one of them is the uh, Charles Butt Scholarship Raising Texas Teachers Program. Congratulations. So proud of you, Camila. Also, we're going to check on uh, the roads with traffic. Officer Solis, I know we've had some kind of slick situations, but it looks pretty clear now.
Yeah, things are looking good. We have one minor accident here in Nacogdoches, and it uh, looks like it's stall, uh, but still trying to get some more information on that. But let's take a look at some drive times. My drive times are not working today. I apologize. Eastbound 000 is not, you know, a time. So sorry about that. But let's take a look outside. 35 at Martin, looking good right now. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, 10 at Ralph Fair. That's looking good, flowing smoothly, both uh, north and south lanes. So that's great. And 10 inbound and outbound, I-10 at Frio looking good. Thank you, Nick. Let's talk about some of those warnings we have going on still uh, to our south. These warnings generally are around the Corpus area, so almost out of our viewing area, but we continue to get some of these warnings coming in for these quick spin ups that uh, looks like the, they're showing up on radar. None of these uh, we're not getting any ground truth out of this, but these are just radar indicated. So let's take a little closer look. It's been with this cluster down here uh, south and west of Beeville, and that's where uh, these storms have sort of been heaviest and where there does appear to be just a little bit of rotation associated with this. We're going to switch this over to velocity mode and what this tells us is if there is any potential rotation there where you see places where there's a red and green sort of close together. It looks like there may be a little bit of a spin up potentially right there in southern Live Oak County. That potential warning goes until 630 this morning and then this new warning which is just southwest of Mathis goes until 645 for another little uh, potential spin up there. We'll switch it over to velocity mode, see if we can see anything else. Yeah, maybe uh, right there. These are all tracking out to the north, by the way, north and northwest about uh, 15, 20 miles per hour. And uh, we'll go ahead and take that off, take the uh, warnings off and we'll put this into motion, put it on to uh, radar and we'll show you that uh, this rain has been pretty heavy and it's not moving terribly fast. So places like uh, Live Oak County may see some flood advisories here soon just because I think I think the rain is going to uh, come down pretty heavy and we're, we're seeing that as far as uh, rainfall rates go. The, the numbers are pretty high, potentially two to three inches per hour. So that's going to add up. Uh, let's zoom out here and talk about San Antonio. Uh, not much going on yet, although we have seen a few rain showers uh, show up and it's been light and I think we're going to see an increase as this uh, heavier moisture, deeper moisture starts moving in our direction. Let's switch radar sites here and go over to the uh, New Braunfels radar and uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer to San Antonio and still not a lot there, but we are starting to see some returns now. Wilson County also around uh, Kennedy and Carn City. You're starting to get a little bit of rain this morning too and uh, these downpours will be around most of the day. It'll be hit or miss. Not everybody's going to get rainfall, but if you do get some rain out of it, it likely will be pretty heavy. So uh, here's a look at the future cast, and this is just one of our computer models, but it shows by 9 o'clock this activity moving a little bit closer to San Antonio. Then by midday, we'll have these downpours around, and they'll continue into the afternoon and evening hours, and there could be pockets where you see some uh, pretty hefty rainfall totals even into this evening. Now, once the sun goes down, we should lose daytime heating and a lot of this will start to fall apart. So here's what you need to know. Scattered heavy downpours today. There will be some hazy skies as well. That dust plume is here. So if the clouds move out of the way and sun's out, you may see some hazy conditions. And then this weekend, drier, quieter and warmer. There's a the situation outside right now. 76 degrees, cloudy skies. Uh, most places in the 70s at this hour. Uh, so we're off to a warm and humid start and temperatures will be kept down a little bit today because of the uh, clouds and rain. About a 60% chance of rain into the afternoon, upper 80s for highs, and then rain chances fall off this weekend, and it gets warmer and quieter next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. Just about 620, 76 degrees. A very rare poster autographed by Steve Jobs has been sold. We'll tell you how much it went for and the meaning behind the purchase. That's next on GMSA. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. You try to stay ahead of the mess, but scrubbing still takes time. Now there's new Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. It's the faster way to clean as you go. Just spray, wipe, and rinse. It cleans grease five times faster. New Dawn Power Wash. Spray, wipe, rinse. What makes you you? Your cells. Trillions of them. That's why Centrum contains 24 key nutrients to support your energy. So you can take care of what matters most. And try new Centrum Minis today. It's our do-it-all concealer. Instant eraser from Maybelline, New York. Iconic cushion tip does it all. Erase, 
shape, correct. No wonder it's America's number one concealer. Instant eraser, only from Maybelline, New York. Love them? Hate their laundry protection. Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% of bacteria. Detergent alone can't. Lysol, what it takes to protect. And this morning's GMA First Look, the surging coronavirus numbers and your summer vacation. With COVID-19 cases on the rise in parts of the country, there's new concern over travel in America. New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut saying those traveling from eight hotspot states must now quarantine for 14 days. Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Utah, and Texas on the list. New Yorker Andrew Kyle Brown is flying to Alabama. I'm worried about catching it in the plane on the way back. Experts say for travelers this summer will look very different. It's going to be a drive market. It's going to be domestic. People are going to stay home. They're going to be in America. International will come later, but right now it's domestic travel. And if your family is planning to travel across state lines this summer, we'll have the important information you need to know coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. One of the world's largest telecommunications companies was holding advertising on Facebook until the social media giant cracks down on hate speech. Verizon says it's joining a growing boycott of the social media giant as part of a new movement of organizers calling for a uh, call Stop Hate for Profit. Well, meanwhile, Apple says it is reclosing 14 locations in Florida because of concerns about the coronavirus. This is the second time those stores will be shutting down due to the pandemic. Since last week, Apple has also reclosed stores here in Texas, Arizona, and the Carolinas. A poster autographed by the late Steve Jobs just sold an auction for $12,000. It's from Next Computer, a company that uh, Mr. Jobs founded in 1985 after he was initially forced out of Apple. Apple. Here's a fun fact. Apple ended up buying Next Computer, bringing jobs back and making him a very, very rich man. Right now on KSAT.com, we have plenty of critter stories to keep you entertained. And one that's been trending is about snake sightings. Experts with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension says that this is the time of year snake sightings drastically increase. So what can you do? Two things that homeowners can do is remove potential shelter and food and keep storage areas as clean and tidy as possible. Snakes can fit through tiny openings and easily hide in areas like wood and brush piles. And a press release sent to KSAT Texas A&M AgriLife Extension says it's also important to teach children not to reach inside crevices. The common venomous snakes in South Texas are copperheads, cottonmouths, rattlesnakes, and coral snakes. For more about these snakes and how to distinguish them, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's 626 and 76 degrees. The House has passed police reform legislation to honor George Floyd. Still ahead, details of what is included in that legislation. And also ahead in our next half hour, her Erica Hernandez introduces us to the Good Kind restaurant and what they are doing to keep the business going during this pandemic. And we'll check back in with Nick, get an update on time saver traffic on your Friday morning. We'll be right back. The sound of a car crash alerts neighbors to the effects of gunfire on a driver shot in his car. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber in West Bear County. I'll have that story. What the Baylor College of Medicine is saying if the current trend in coronavirus cases continues and what that would mean for Texas. Outside with live cam, really can't tell here, but we've got some storms inbound uh, closer to the heart of the KSAT 12 viewing area. We'll check in with Justin and get an update from Radar momentarily. Good morning to you. It is Friday. We made it through the week. It's June 26th. Feels good to be Friday, but we do have some severe weather we need to get to, Justin. Yeah, we continue to track a couple storms. The, these are really down around the Corpus area, but we've had a couple warnings come out. We'll uh, pop these warnings up here and uh, we'll talk about uh, where they're headed. Uh, it's still just a tornado. It, it is a tornado warning. Uh, we've seen a little bit of rotation associated with this, and this really, for the most part, is out of our viewing area, but uh, it is moving towards Live Oak County, so we want to address it here. Uh, the Corpus office has been uh, putting these warnings out for these uh, small rotations. Uh, weak rotations, but they are there, and so we need to address them. And that tornado warning is going to go uh, till about 6:45 this morning. So another 15 minutes or so. And what we can do is put on velocity here, and uh, really uh, 
the, the rotation has been pretty weak. We're looking at the wrong radar site here, uh, but it's been right around Mathis where we've seen some of that. And we also have a new flash flood warning, by the way, uh, that is out for parts of Lake, uh, Live Oak County, and that's going to go until 915 this morning. We've seen some really heavy rain there. So let's switch it back to radar and we'll show you that uh, this activity is uh, starting to move towards the San Antonio area. It looks like we have a new flood advisory also out uh, for parts of Carnes County. Uh, that goes until 9.30, uh, seeing some very heavy rain around Kennedy, and this also is moving north. And then you'll notice we've got uh, some returns starting to show up around Floresville. We may start to see a little bit of that here in Bear County as well. Uh, we're going to be tracking all of this for you and expect to see some downpours through the day today. Some heavy downpours at times. It's not going to rain all day long, but the rain chances there are there about 60 percent. We're going to have a, a radar update for you, get you the rest of your forecast and talk about the weekend here in just a little bit. But uh, we have had a few issues on the roadways this morning. Let's get over to Officer Nick Sillies. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, the highways look good. Things look great out there. Just dealing with one major your accident right now. It's Nacogdoches at Stall Road near 1604 on the far north side. Uh, this accident's been there for about 20 minutes now. It looks like a wrecker is on scene. Just keep that in mind if you are heading that way. I know Nacogdoches can get a little um, packed there right before 1604. All right, taking a look at the trans guide. Tenant Frio inbounds and outbounds. Looking great for a Friday morning. Look at that. Traffic is flowing very smoothly there. 410 at Callahan, same. Both uh, north and southbound lanes look great there. 410 at Jackson Keller down the road. That looks good. So all around the city, 35 and 410, everything looks great. So that's good for you. Roadways could be a little slick. However, watch that speed. We want everyone to get into work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, right now we continue with the late breaking news in West Bear County where a man was shot in the back and later taken to the hospital. This happened in the 9800 block of Misty Plain Drive around five this morning. Katrina Weber is still on the scene. Katrina, what's the very latest out there? Well, good morning. Uh, we are learning that the man who was shot is 19 years old and he apparently was the driver of the car, but he did have two other people in that vehicle with him. I want to give you a look at the car right now because it's daylight and you can see better how that back window is shot out. This is where the car ended up. The driver shot and uh, he lost control of the car hitting that pickup that was in the driveway of this home here on Misty Plain. Now, according to the neighbor, there were two other people in the car. He says that they got out. They tried to help the driver out. Uh, brought him out to the ground and had him lying there until help arrived. Uh, the sheriff's office is still unsure of what led to the shooting. They say that they were not able to get a whole lot of information from those people, but that is something that they're working on to try to figure out who may have been behind the shooting. We do know that they found some evidence uh, right here around the corner. They found some shell casings, so it looks like the shooting may have happened relatively close to where this car did crash and stop. The driver was taken to a hospital, shot in the back and also grazed in the head. They say that he was alert and talking when he was rushed to a hospital. And again, that investigation uh, just started about five o'clock this morning. Uh, detectives plan to question the two people were, who were here and also to continue looking through this neighborhood for more evidence. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A surge in cases of COVID-19 here in San Antonio is actually putting a strain on some rural hospitals. Leaders in both Maverick and Val Verde counties say ICU patients looking to be transferred to larger San Antonio hospitals are being put on wait lists or rerouted. An Eagle Pass doctor says he's worried that if they have another surge like the one they're currently experiencing, they won't have the capacity to treat people. Rural hospitals report that they can't get access to medicine like remdesivir to treat COVID patients and their ventilators and ICU space is limited. The executive director for Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council says San Antonio hospitals are stressed. Only about 20 to 25 percent of ICU beds are available here and with this wave being five times worse than the first, they are worried about the weeks ahead. The ICU capability is tight. Uh, but when we start running completely out of ICU beds, run out of hospital beds, and uh, that, that's when things will get really weird. The sooner we can address flattening this curve and um, stopping the spread, that can be prevented if we take the measures we have to and have personal responsibility for not just ourselves, but our family members, especially our vulnerable populations like our parents um, and our grandparents. 
Valverde County Judge Lewis Owen says their numbers went up by 100 cases in less than a month, but they've also had issues transferring patients to those larger hospitals. He hopes that by cracking down on masks and social distancing guidelines, rural communities can get a handle on the situation in about three weeks. But he says citizens need to begin taking personal responsibility for their own health by abiding by those guidelines. Well, listen to this. Baylor College of Medicine says if the trend continues in coronavirus cases, Houston could end up as the top hotspot in North America. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the White House Coronavirus Task Force plans to hold its first public meeting in nearly two months. COVID-19 has infected more than 2.4 million Americans and counting. We have to deal with this as a as a country, you know, not, not in this sort of piecemeal fashion. More than 37,000 new confirmed cases were reported in the U.S. Thursday, according to Johns Hopkins University. That's nearly 800 above the previous high from April. If you let everybody out without face masks and without social in the middle of a pandemic, this is what was predict predicted. 60% of the country is reporting increases in week-to-week -week new cases, with 13 states seeing a rise of at least 50%. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says for every COVID-19 diagnosis, there are 10 others that were missed. The only good news in this is that the death rate has gone down somewhat as uh, we're learning how to treat people better, we're less overloaded. But uh, the global picture and the U.S. picture are both uh, more bleak than I would have expected. And medical experts say inaction is not an option. If we don't do something, um, and I mean really strong, on uh, containment, surveillance, contact tracing, and isolation, we're in for a very, very rough time. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, in your morning headlines, the Federal Reserve says a worst case scenario for the U.S. economy affected by the pandemic would cause the nation's 34 largest banks to collectively lose roughly $700 billion. Because of this, the Federal Reserve ordered banks to suspend buybacks of their own stock and dividend payouts until September 30th. The move comes as the central bank unveiled its latest stress test, which are designed to measure the ability of the nation's largest banks to recover quickly from difficulties. Passing this test is a requirement for the banks to start buying back shares or paying out dividends. On this vote, the yeas are 236, the nays are 181. The bill is passed. House of Representatives passed police reform legislation named in honor of George Floyd Thursday. The bill bans chokeholds at the federal level and forbids no knock warrants on federal drug cases, among others. But it has little chance of being taken up in the Senate. Republican and Democrats, uh, Republicans and Democrats in both chambers of Congress have called for quick action to address police misconduct, but have not yet found common ground on exactly how to do that. 639, 76 degrees. Well, next on GMSA, our Erica Hernandez takes us to the Good Kind restaurant and gives us a look at its outdoor seating and menu in this week's Flavor Faves. Welcome back. Lufthansa has secured shareholder approval for an aid package worth about $10 billion to help the airline stay afloat. Germany's national airline will eventually pay back all the funding granted by the government. On Wednesday, they reached a deal with the German Flight Attendants Union, and the airline is on course to settle a similar agreement with the Pilots Union. 80% of Lufthansa's fleet is still grounded, and Europe's leading global airline said there will be no quick return to pre-crisis levels. Australia. The host country of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023, which will be Australia. Australia and New Zealand are celebrating after it was announced they'll be co-hosting FIFA Women's World Cup in 2023. Australia's Sydney Opera House was lit up in green and blue last night. Show of support for the bid. The 2023 Women's World Cup will be the first one ever held in the Southern Hemisphere. It'll be played across eight stadiums in Australia and five in New Zealand. Well, as many restaurants try to figure out how to survive the COVID-19 pandemic, the good kind is in Southtown, and they have been thankful to be able to keep their doors open. In this week's Flavor Faves, Erica Hernandez takes us to the local eatery, showing off its outdoor seating and menu. Like all places in town, the good kind has had to switch gears several times because of the current pandemic. It's just 
like from one minute to the next I'm like I keep telling my friends I'm like I'm so tired of pivoting I feel like the exorcist I'm just like my head is just spinning like every minute is a different thing chef and owner of the good kind Tim McDermott has gone from scaling back her menu to a meal delivery service and now hosting social distancing speed dating and film series events one of the advantages here at the good kind is all this outside space you can grab a meal and eat out here we are very fortunate that we have like I said, an acre of outdoor space. Um, as you can see here, I mean, we've always had our tables really spaced. We have counter service so people don't have to be inside very long. Of course, everyone is wearing masks and we have sanitizer and all the guidelines. Um, but I think people do feel pretty safe here. And the food will get ready for some healthy comfort food. I still have tried, really kept with my brand in the way that even when though we've added hamburgers and you know we have chicken wings and cauliflower wings just more sort of bar friendly food because we have a full mixed beverage license but still everything is made with really high quality ingredients and we try to keep it on the lighter side. The Good Kind is located at 1127 South St. Mary's and their hours are 4 to 9 Monday through Friday and 11 to 9 on Saturday and Sunday. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Quarter to seven on your Friday morning. Well, Officer Nick, I know the roads were slick out there causing some accidents. Is everything cleared up? Yeah, everything's cleared up. Couple of uh, minor accidents here, but not on the major highways. Uh, expect a smooth ride if you still are heading to work. Let's take a look at those minor accidents. So the 6900 block of Blanco Road there uh, near uh, Rector Private Drive area, there is a accident there. We're also still working on this other accident here in Nacogdoches at Stall Road. That should be cleared up here pretty soon, though. And uh, taking a look at the Trans Guide 410 in Jackson Keller. Look how good that looks. That's smooth right there. 35 and 410. That's looking great. And uh, we'll do one more. 35 in New Braunfels. Um, smooth sailing. So please everyone get to work safely and go that speed limit. All right, Justin, how's the weather looking? Thank hey, Nick. Uh, you know, we had a couple of rain showers earlier here in San Antonio. Looks like the roads look pretty dry from what you were showing there, but uh, we're getting some activity starting to increase and work its way towards San Antonio. You see some showers there. Wilson County. These will be working in the Bear County pretty quickly, and we've got some really good downpours down to the south around Corpus. They've been picking up uh, a lot of good rainfall and then around Carnes County. We do have a flood advisory. Let's put up some of these uh, watches or warnings, I should say, that we have out there are some advisories still carrying a tornado warning uh, for a little bit longer down there uh, just south and west of Bevo. We, we continue to see just some uh, weak rotation down there, but enough to warrant a warning. Uh, so far, uh, this has stayed pretty much south of us, but we are keeping an eye on this. Uh, we've had just these uh, small circulations build up this morning just to the west of Corpus. Sometimes you can see that with this uh, with the tropical air mass. And uh, that's continuing to move off to the north and west. It may move a little bit closer to George West here over the next uh, 30 minutes or so. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. This has really been around the Mathis area. You see George West there. This is working along uh, Interstate 37. So if you're going to be traveling south along Interstate 37, be aware. And if you're in uh, southern Live Oak County, uh, go ahead and take cover from these storms. Uh, they have been rather uh, robust. Meantime, uh, we talked about the, the heavy rain there in uh, Carnes County, still seeing some good rain around Kennedy and Carnes City. And we'll put the uh, rainfall rate on and we'll show you that these have been very efficient rain producers. Uh, where you see some of these purple colors, uh, that's putting down a lot of rain. And so oh, we're looking at about five inches per hour. Now, these aren't going to sit there for an hour, so you're not going to pick up five inches. But if they sit there for half an hour, you're going to pick up a good amount of rain, and that may cause a little bit of flooding. So a flood advisory is in effect there for our Carnes uh, County, and that's going to go for a little bit longer this morning. And then again, we're starting to see some of the activity move a little bit closer to uh, Bear County. The radar is showing that uh, these uh, showers and storms are uh, tracking off to the uh, north and west at this hour. And it looks like uh, the radar doesn't want to move for me, but uh, we're going to continue to see the chance for downpours through the day today. There we go. Uh, as this activity builds into San Antonio, we're already starting to see a few returns there on the south side. So about a 60% chance of rain uh, through the afternoon, and we'll uh, keep you posted through the day. Make sure you got that KSAT weather app. It has the radar on there, on there and you can uh, track all of this activity. Our computer model does show by 9 o'clock we've got the... Uh, Healthy downpours around the area by midday. Some of this is spreading towards the hill country. I think the best chance for rain, sort of like yesterday, will be along and east of I-35. But everybody at least has uh, a slight chance for some showers and storms. 
and even into the evening hours, we'll still see some of this activity and some of these clusters could produce some decent heavy rain. We're looking at what looks like a few rain showers here off to the east. Sun's trying to peek through. Don't know that we'll see all that much sun today. 76 right now and temperatures 75 Castroville, 71 Bandera. We're looking at 75 down there in Catula. It's very humid outside too. If you stepped outside this morning, the humidity is thick. Uh, rain chances 60% through about 3 o'clock. We'll see them taper off a little bit this evening. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15. 93 degrees tomorrow, 93 on Sunday, 20% chance rain. And then hot next week. We still got that dust cloud out there too. Can't really notice it because we got the cloud covering away. But if the sun pops out today, you may notice a hazy sky as well. Definitely take some of that rain. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Some good news there. 649, 76 degrees. Well, watching too many home improvement shows during the pandemic might have you thinking about changing some things around your own house, but you might be jumping into something just a little too big. Tomorrow on GMSA, our RJ Marquez will have some tips on how to DIY successfully. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. We'll be right back. Coming up here on GMA, a record number of coronavirus cases nationwide for the second straight day. The hard hit Texas and Arizona both announcing plans to hit pause as they try to get it under control. One of the nation's leading public health experts will join us live. You'll see that and more coming up right here on GMA. What looked like a car accident instead appears to be more of an intentional shooting. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber in West Bear County. The driver of a car was shot. His car ended up in the front yard of a home here in the 9800 block of Misty Plain. You can see it there with the back window shot out. It crashed into the pickup, which was in the driveway of this home. According to the sheriff's office, it was the driver who was shot. They say that he was hit in the back and also grazed in his head. They confirmed that there were two passengers in the car who were not hurt. Those people are in the custody of the sheriff's deputies being questioned about exactly what happened. At this point, deputies don't have any information on who may have shot the driver or why. Well, they did some searching in this area and they did come across a couple of shell casings. So it appears that the shots were fired in this area and then that car crashed just moments later, right around 5 o'clock this morning. Again, the driver taken to the hospital. We do not have an update on his condition, but deputies tell us he was talking and alert when he went to the hospital. Reporting from West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Five minutes till seven. We're going to check in with Officer Solis. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, everything's looking good right now, everyone. Please uh, just be careful. Roadways can be just a little slick. When everyone get into work safely, watch that speed limit. Make sure uh, you put your seatbelt on. Uh, and but other than that, things are looking good. If you're headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Looking here at the screen, there's no accidents to report, which is always good news here all the time. All right, Justin, how's the weather? Uh, we still got some showers and storms out there. Uh, we're watching an area of moisture moving north. Uh, the heaviest of the rain right now out in Carnes County. We're seeing a flood advisory there for some uh, rainfall rates about one to two inches. You could pick up over an inch of rain there this morning. And some of this is trying to move a little bit closer to San Antonio. We're starting to see some returns there uh, across southeastern parts of Bear County. And expect an expansion of this. So we're going to see these downpours into the afternoon. We're still looking at about a 60% chance of rain here today. It'll be hit or miss, not raining all day, but some good downpours through the afternoon. So keep an umbrella handy just in case. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. You, you as too. well. You thank too. you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, America's Next. We'll see you in a couple hours for GMSA at 9.